YouTube, it's me, it's Shin Tiger Curl here, that guy in the straw hat, and happy Thanksgiving to all of you across America who are watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed your turkey and your stuffing and your potato salad and your pies, and and I'm still digesting it as you as we speak. I am joined here by my co-host and associate Joe. Say hi, Joe. He's very personable. Anyway, today is Thursday, and it's time for uh, our imp my impact review. And while I may talk a lot of shit, if I have been talking a lot of shit about TNA in the past couple of weeks, I have to say this one wasn't so bad. It's had its shitty moments, but it was decent. Not very good, but not very bad. In between. All right, let's get to the let's get to the stuff. The show starts off with um. Fortune with me, immortal, having a Thanksgiving dinner, and our good friend Eric Bischoff is is telling everyone that have a thankful year and that they're having a very special guest, and that guest is the former president of TNA, Miss Dixie. I can't act to save my life, Carter. Of course, everyone's wondering what the hell Bischoff is thinking, and he it just assures them that it's all going according to plan. Uh, the sh the actual show opens up with Morgan coming out of the ring and cutting a very good promo, stating that he will pick his guest referee for his return title match against Jeff Hardy with very much consideration. Uh, then Douglas Williams comes out, and he gets he gets over pretty easy. I thought he was going to have a hard time getting over, seeing as how he was a former heel, but he did pretty well. He did a very funny and very deep good promo. And I see a lot of good things coming from him. Uh, next, Fortune comes out with only four members, and Kazarian gets on the mic and starts talking shit about them. And he then mentions the um, the, the Survivor Series. He doesn't outright say it, but you know he meant it. He was implying it. And he says he just, they want to, let's just have, for the main event, a classic um, Survivor Series style match. Four, four person teams. Uh, elimination style. So now Morgan and Williams have to find two more people to tag with them for the main event. We'll get to those two later. Um, excuse me for a second. BK. Yeah. Um, the first match of the night: uh, Rhino versus uh, Tommy Dreamer in a final street fight. I don't even know what the hell a final street fight is. They had to play final fight before the match or something. What? Matt Haggard's gonna be the ref special guest referee, whatever. But uh, I, it's a much, it's the, it's a good match. Kind of what you would expect from both Rhino and Tommy Dreamer. Not really high fly stuff. They just beat the crap out of each other with whatever's on hand. Uh, Tommy gets the roll up and the win, and he 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 talks to to Rhino saying that yeah you went out. The other guys went out too, but they went out. And they didn't sell out. So what kind of guy you want to go out to be? He extends his hand for a handshake, and then Rhino promptly gores him through a table. RVD comes out, and he challenges Rhino to a first blood match at the next pay-per-view. Uh, next, the next segment was a recap of the empty arena match between the Motor City Machine Guns and Generation Me. Now, I wasn't able to catch it last week on account I didn't watch uh, Reaction, but from what I saw, it was a pretty good match. It was very brutal, very they, very high-flying, a lot of spots in between, and it's, uh, and they really put their asses on the line for a match that didn't even wasn't even shown on the main show. And so I've got to give kudos to both uh, the Bucks and the Guns for being consummate Professionals and giving us one hell of a match. Kudos, guys. Uh, next up, uh, we have a. Then after that, the guns brag about their victory and state that at at um the next pay per view. I don't know. I can't remember the name right now. It's going to be them versus the um the young bucks in a full metal mayhem match, aka a TLC match. Kind of 
thinking about how it's coinciding with the next pay per view, next WWE pay per view, which it happens to be called Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. Oh my. Anyway, Madison Rain comes by and she says she wants to fight that bitch, uh, Serena, for some reason. I don't know why. So the next segment is Serena versus, Ta versus Madison Rain in an impromptu match. And it was a very good match. Um, it really showed up the talents of both women, mo mostly Sarita. People forget that she's a good wrestler. And it ends with her victory. Uh, mind you, I should have started, stated before this, I didn't catch all this. I've been in and out of my room. So I wasn't able to catch everything. Um, the, then cut back to f Immortal, still giving each other blowjobs and stroking their dicks when the Antichrist of professional wrestling walks in. Now, the reason I don't like him as a heel is because um, he came in there and he started spouting all this dark Edgar Allan Poe bullshit like, I'm the earth, I'm the sun, I'm the shit between the ass of the jackass of the universe, I am immortal. Yeah. Still can't buy that guy, he looks stupid. Anyway, um, Morgan and, and Williams first um, pick for their tag team partner is Samoa Joe. Now Joe wants nothing to do with them. He thinks he can take care of Immortal all by himself. But they finally are able to convince him to come around to their side. Uh, what's that? Uh, next match I remember is an exhibition submission match. Of course, before this, Jeff Jarrett was still pushing his MMA angle to some little kids who accurately say that, that the Kurt Angle perfected the um, angle lock. Uh, Jeff, you just do a pale imitation of it. Anyway, the submission match is between him and and member on uh, one half of Ink Ink, Jesse Neal. Now they're both decked out in standard MMA gear, the eight ounce gloves. They're both got the tape feet, and it's I don't remember much about it. But at one point, Brian Hempter takes a, a bump. Then Jeff goes outside the ring, pulls out his guitar, and lays him out. It's the first time we've seen the guitar in a long time. So, he t he gets rid of the evidence, and it's just as Brian Hefner gets, gets, recovers, gains consciousness, he got, has him in a rear naked choke, and he wins via submission. I can't wait for Joe to kill you, Jeff. Anyway, um, the next person that Williams and Morgan decide to, uh, decide to um, get is the Pope. Now, of course, the Pope doesn't want anything to do with it. He's, he wants to stay the road that he's on. Morgan and Williams remind him that they were once members of Immortal and know the game plan. So even if he makes it past the Abyss, he'll still have to face Jeff Jarrett. And if he gets past Jeff Jarrett, he'll have to face uh, Fortune. And if he gets past Fortune, then he's got to fight Jeff Hardy. And, that's not gonna, and he's not going to survive it. So Pope agrees, but he's, he doesn't guarantee that he'll be able to get along with Samoa Joe. Why? I don't know. They were teenage booking. Uh, next up is the is um, Bubba comes out, cuts a promo, very good promo. Say what you want about the Dudley boys, they can cut good promos. They're good faces, but they're great heels. Isn't that right, Joe? So anyway, he says that he was the the true leader of um, that of of Team 3D, and that without him. Um, Devon's uh, 15 minutes of fame would only be 15 minutes. So he goes on to show a small video packages of Devon getting his ass handed to him and getting pinned and making him look like a total bitch. And while him kicking the crap out of people and just made it look strong as hell. So he and Devon will have a confrontation the next week and, and prepare to, and to talk out their differences. Uh... Next, I remember I had to leave, and then I came back, and I saw um, the the knockouts having some kind of feud, and then Winter, aka Katie Lee Burchill, makes her long-awaited debut, stating that Velvet Sky is with her now. Am I the only one who thinks I find her a little bit hot? I mean, really. I mean, I, I wouldn't date her, but I'd still fuck her. Anyway, we move on to back to um, Immortals still stroking their cocks, saying what they're thankful for. Abyss sounds completely 
out of place, saying that I'm grateful for my girl Janice. <sighs> Janice, <sighs> licking his freaking murder weapon. Yeah, that's what Spoonie calls it—a murder weapon. He just looks so out of place. I mean, Immortal just seemed like a very mis patchwork stable. It doesn't really work for me. Then Hogan makes the most out of character statement ever. He says, look brother, if Dixie Carter comes here, I'm not going to be held responsible for what happens. So wait. Hulk Hogan, the, the icon of professional wrestling, the paragon of righteousness and fairness, the man who said, eat your vitamins and say your prayers, just said, just threatened to beat up a woman. Fuck you, Hulk Hogan. Ugh. So I move on to the main event. Uh, the main event between uh, Williams, Doug, between Williams, Morgan, Pope, and Samoa Joe, and the Fortune Four. Now, I have to say, this was a better Survivor Series style match than the, than, the, uh, than the actual Survivor Series style match that we had this Sunday, last Sunday. It, it was an appropriate number because all the old Survivor Series teams had only four members per team. And not to mention, you have eight of the best wrestlers in the company just wrestling their asses off. I mean, it, it was just good. It was, it was just really good. I mean, Pope, Joe killed people. Pope looked good. Morgan was owning people left or right. AJ was being AJ. Beer Money was being Beer Money. Kaz was doing this Kaz thing. Uh, and of course, Douglas Williams was did his Chaos Theory suplex on somebody. I had to expect him to throw a brick at somebody, but, but I can still dream. One of these days, somebody's going to eat another brick to the face. So, the um, match soon becomes two on becomes a four on two in favor of Team Morgan after Kaz and James Storm are eliminated. Then suddenly for the middle of the match, Pope and Joe start having an argument. And at one point they both get a blind tag on Williams and they both get in the ring. Then they start fighting. I have no reason I have no understanding of why these two would want to fight. They're on the same side. They're both fighting against Immortal. Why would they be? What the fuck would they be fighting for? But anyway, I guess there's a reason to get rid of them without making the, them look weak or something. So that since they just brawled outside the ring and just left, so it's a two-on-two. -two. Uh, Williams is taken out by Jeff Hardy. Well, not Jeff Hardy. He's taken out by um, by AJ by AJ Styles, leaving only Morgan left to fight. Morgan takes out. AJ and is prepared to take out um, Robert Roode when the Antichrist of Wrestling, aka Jeff Hardy's, I mean, I mean, aka um, the Joker's retarded cousin, Jeff Hartley, can get over as a heel because he doesn't try, jumps the ring, takes out Morgan, and then takes out the referee who happens to be Eric Bischoff's son. Don't know how that works. And so he does his little. Um, the Antichrist of Wrestling. My brother's coming and he'll be fat and we'll be uninteresting and fat together. You suck, Jeff Carter. So, we go to reaction and um, Dixie Carter comes and, and, and they all start talking. It's that kind of fake civil that they're doing. Like, uh, they're, they, they're just like, let's be nice to each other, but we're gonna be, um, uh, friggin' like, you have a good day, Dixie. No, you have a good day, Eric. And there's animosity under there. Then Dixie informs Hogan and says that, Hogan, I understand that you've been signing a lot of talent lately, but I'm afraid to tell you that um, you are not a, you don't have the power to do that. But I'm making the company better. I'm sure you've been watching, Hulk. Oh, oh that's right. You're too busy stroking your cock. So. Anyway, Dixie informs him that because of this, she has a court order injunction on Bischoff and Hogan, meaning as of this moment, they don't have any power. And she just takes a of champagne and leaves while the hip hypocrites of Immortal say it's not fair even though they pretty much stole the company right from under her, illegally, and admitted it on camera.
camera.